This is Andy Schaefers with Acuity. This week's video is targeted at beginning or intermediate users of NX Cam. I'll be discussing the in-process workpiece, or IPW. I've got a couple slides to provide some context, then we'll jump right into the demo. First, let's define an in-process workpiece, or again, we use the acronym IPW. The IPW is a faceted solid which NX stores internally, and it's time dependent or operation dependent. In other words, it changes as we complete the machining operations on our part. When we begin, the IPW is our blank. Then, as we create those operations, material is removed, and the IPW is updated so that it always looks like the current state of machining. Then at the conclusion of our last operation, the IPW matches our part. As programmers, there's three areas of skills that we're going to want to have to be able to work effectively with the IPW we need to know how the IPW is created and when we make changes how is that IPW updated and how does NX track the IPW and this is important when we look at the relationship between the program order and the geometry order second we want to know what situations the operations use the IPW and what options are available for us to control how the operation is going to respond to the to the IPW and finally as programmers how can we visualize the IPW where do we see the IPW appear and how do we control that here's the NX CAM part we will be working with in the demonstration before we get started though make sure that your interface has the IPW column activated if it doesn't here's how to do it Go to a gray area, right-click your mouse. Then you can choose Columns and check IPW on here. Then you can go to Configure, select IPW, and if you need to, move it up so that it's easier to see near the beginning. Let's discuss how NX Cam keeps track of the in-process workpiece. First, I'll double-click on the workpiece object here that I've created and you can see when I hit the torch that this is the part that's been selected and then let's go to specify blank so you can see how I set that up it's simply a bounding block with 40 thousandths of an inch of additional material on the top of the block any operation that is a child of this workpiece will then be participating in the creation of the in-process workpiece We'll start with that block that I just showed you, and then each operation removes material from that block until we get down to our final operation where hopefully it looks like our part. Sometimes programmers make a mistake though. They'll take an operation like this one, and rather than it be a child of the workpiece, it's just a child of the MCS. You can certainly fill out the geometry and you'll have a valid operation you can post it but that operation will not participate in the creation of the in-process workpiece so to make that happen again the operation must be a child of the workpiece itself let's create our first operation we'll face the top of the block off I'll be using the floor wall with IPW command but I'll show you in a minute that these two commands, the floor wall and the floor wall with IPW, are actually the same command. They just differ in a setting for the way the IPW is used internally. I'm, I already have this command set up, so I'll just drag and drop it so that it's a child of the workpiece. Before we generate, let's have a look at how it's set up, though. I have a depth per cut of 50 thousandths, and the preview for this command is checked on and that's what you're seeing on the screen the command is then showing you what the IPW currently looks like and of course because no operations have been performed yet 
the IPW looks like our blank. You see that 40 thousandths of material. The command is then showing in green what could be machined based on the current settings. And the face on top is selected, so it's understanding that it can machine the top of that off, and that's why that's highlighted green. All right, let's hit generate. It machines the top of the part, and there's only one pass because there was 40 thousandths of material with a 50 thousandths depth per cut. Okay, let's look at how that is represented in the geometry view. I have a valid path, so there's a check mark here, and in the IPW column, I have a green check also indicating that the IPW was created and it's up to date. I can then see that current state of the in-process workpiece by right-clicking and I can choose Workpiece Show 3D. And that is what the part looks like as a result of that first machining operation. I'll hit F5 to clear that. And now I want to go back in and make some changes to the way this operation functions. I'm going to Cutting Parameters and then Containment. And here I'm going to change it so that the command works like the just the um, floor wall command does. I'm going to change the IPW to thickness and I'll leave the floor blank thickness at 0.1. So now it's just imagining internally that it has a hundred thousandths of stock on that face. Let's click OK and generate. Okay, now I get two passes in Z because the depth per cut was only 50,000, so it realizes it needed to add a second pass. But what's going to happen then if I verify this? Let's do that now. We're on 3D Dynamic, and I will just hit the play button. And right now, it's doing an air pass. The second pass, though, machines that 40 thousandths off. What's significant about what we just saw is that the change we made in containment to have 100 thousandths of stock on the part only affected what was happening inside this operation, and it caused it to create that second set of passes in Z. It did not affect the creation of the internal IPW, which continued to flow from the workpiece and the way I set that blank up with 40 thousandths of stock there. So that's an important distinction then. The internal IPW continues even though we made some changes to the settings inside the operation. Now we'll add a cavity mill operation to our program. I've got one already started here. I'll just drag and drop it into place. This is using a one inch cutter and I want to point out a couple things about our geometry. Uh, the one inch cutter would fit into this radius here. However, this little peninsula uh, creates a situation where it actually can fit nowhere in this pocket and we'll be talking about that more in, in a few minutes. Then this is just a, a simple straight wall cavity. Uh, here we've got some shallow features and out here some features that occur out on an oblique angle. Before we generate though, I'll just double click on it so that we can see how it's set up. I've got a maximum distance of 0.25 so when we hit the cut levels then it goes all the way to the bottom, but because there's no stock on the outside, we don't expect to see any toolpath generated below this point right here. Let's do that now. Okay, for the most part that looks okay, uh, but there's one sort of glaring problem, and that is it's machining the whole top of our part off. But we just did that here with the floor wall IPW, so that's not actually going to be removing any material. Why is that happening? It's happening because cav the cavity mill at this time is looking at the original blank. It sees that 40 thousandths of stock on there. What we need to do is have it look at the IPW 
the result of the floor wall with IPW. So let's look at the setting change we need to make to cause that to happen. I've chosen cutting parameters, containment, and under in process workpiece, I'll choose use 3D. Now when I generate, I get a different result. It's no longer machining the, the top of the part because it's recognized through the IPW that, uh, that that material was already gone. I'll point out a change that I see here in the dialog box, though, because I uh, changed that setting. I no longer see the blank as an option, but I have this new option, the specify previous IPW, and when I hit the torch, that is correct. That's what it looked like as a result of the face milling operation. But let's uh, clear that with F5. What if I want to see what things look like as a result of this operation? Well, at the bottom of the dialog, there's a button that says display resulting IPW. And when I choose that, that's what it looks like after machining with the one inch cutter. And as we expected, it does not get into that, uh, that pocket there. There is a, another way to do that though. Uh, I'm going to hit F5 again to clear. I can right click on the operation and shows workpiece show 3D, and that's going to give me that same view again. I'll add a third operation now. This will also be a cavity mill, but it's a half inch diameter cutter, so it's quite a bit smaller than that original one inch cutter, and it will be able to fit into this small pocket and some of these other corners. So the point is we uh, just want it to do the machining of the parts the larger cutter could not reach, but as kind of a review, that's not going to happen right now because it's set up to look at the entire blank. So if I hit generate, it's going to machine the entire part uh, all over again, uh, do a lot of air cutting. So this is a, a review then, but we need to go to cutting parameters, containment, and choose use 3D. All right, let's click OK and generate and uh, well, I'm sorry, before I do that, uh, let's just hit the, the torch here on specify previous IPW. So at this point, this is what this operation is going to see that it has to start with. Okay. Now we'll generate. And here's our resulting toolpath. Now, some of these areas here, uh, for instance, right along here, is probably just machining a little bit of material that it's somehow seen. Uh, we can usually take care of that. A uh, similar situation, perhaps, in these corners where they're almost all cleaned out, and we might actually just want to skip those. And that's here with the minimum material removal. So I can change that maybe to 25 thousandths. And let's see if we can reduce some of the machining we're doing. Yeah, that looks better. So we're skipping those two corners and skipping these areas here where it found something it thought it could cut. Before we continue, let's take a minute to look at how the geometry view and the program order view are related. I'm going to switch over to the program order view and change the order of these first two operations. I'll do that using drag and drop. And as I drop, I get kind of a, a warning here. It says it's ne needing to change the order also in the geometry view. I'll click yes to continue. Here I see my reordering in the program order, and it's also done that in the geometry view. However, I also see that that has put all three operations out of date, as well as the IPWs are also out of date. And this occurs because when we're creating an IPW, uh, the, the operations no longer just exist as independent entities. They are dependent then uh, on the shape of that IPW as it arrives. And when we change the order, of course, that's going to change the IPW shape that each operation sees. So that's why uh, we then link are linked between the program order and the geometry view. So I'm going to undo that. And here's one other change I'd like to make. I'll go to the workpiece. 
back to specify blank and you'll recall there was 40 thousandths of stock on the top I'm just going to switch that to 45 thousandths so make a very small change and then as I do that everything goes out of date again the operations and the uh, IPWs so that again is is a benefit and something you must be careful of when you're using the IPW is that these operations absolutely are dependent on that initial stock shape now we can look at this and we know that that additional five thousandths isn't going to change anything um, it, th this operation is still going to be the same and the other two are unaffected but NX doesn't know that so when that geometry change is made it puts everything out of date and and everything needs to then be regenerated the last area here that has significant material to be roughed off is is the oblique face we're going to assume that we have a four axis machine tool and we're going to rotate the head over so that the tool is normal to this face and the first thing I want to do is put the face mill back in and face off this uh, elliptical surface here. So I'll repurpose this operation by copying and pasting. But of course it is using the wrong face. It's using this face up here. So I will need to go into the cut area floor, remove that face from the set, and then select the face I do want to machine. It'll automatically orient the, the tool axis to that face. I will change my depth of cut to 100 thousandths and then let's generate. Okay, so you see that the, uh, the floor wall with IPW is in the background displaying in preview form the current IPW it needs that so it can figure out how to generate the toolpath on that face and and compute the step downs for instance you see it's got several Z levels here and that's coming from its knowledge of how much stock is left there based on the IPW now we'll add another cavity mill and I want to use that half inch end mill so I will copy and paste this operation This one sets up a little differently. So here I will need to reorient the tool axis. And this will make the Z levels uh, invalid. So I'll need to reselect those cut levels. Its default behavior is to try and cut all the way through the part. So for my range definition, I'll select that as the bottom. I know that's my deepest point in that feature. Then I want to make sure I pick up this face also. So I'll choose Add New Set and create a second range using that face. All right, let's regenerate. And just sort of looking at the toolpath quickly, we can see that it is doing its job in terms of understanding where the IPW is. Uh, all this material up here was already gone, and we can see it's not adding additional passes there. And the same thing on the inside. We got a lot of passes up in here where the previous orientation couldn't reach. Uh, but this is all pretty open down here because all that was already machined out. Now I'll F5 to clear again, and let's have a look at that resulting IPW. Okay, and there we are. For our final step in the demo, we want to accommodate the situation where we don't have a four-axis machine tool. Let's say we had a three-axis machine tool, and we needed to do these first three operations as part of G54, and then we had a a G55 which was over here on this corner so we would then stop reorient the part in the vise uh, pick up G55 and then run those last two operations as op2 so we, we can see how we want to set that up but we have this rule with the IPW that all of the operations have to belong to the same blank they all have to be children of that blank so how can we uh, handle both of those situations where they all need to be part of the same blank but we've got a, a G54 here I'll just change the name real quick 
So there's our G54 and there's our G55. And the solution is essentially to reverse the order here of the the MCS and the workpiece. So let me show you how that, that goes. First, I'm going to take the workpiece and drag and drop it onto the geometry. So now it's up at the top level. Then I'm going to put the G54 inside the workpiece. And also the G55. So I've just reversed the parent-child relationship, where before it was the MCS at the top level, now the workpiece is at the top level, and the MC MCSs are children of that workpiece. Okay, now I need to take these first three operations and drag and drop them onto G54, and the last two operations are children of G55. Real quick, let's just generate this. this is, uh, with all the dragging and dropping, everything's out of date here. And there's those last two operations. All right, let's do a test. Let's go back to the cavity mill here. We'll right click and choose uh, workpiece show 3D. And in fact, it is inheriting all of the other uh, operations are in fact contributing to that IPW that it currently owns. As I've been creating the demo here, you've probably noticed that the IPWs are automatically generating themselves. That's just sort of part of how the software works for the floor wall with IPW. Uh, but with the cavity mills, uh, there's, a, there's a setting in here that I want to show you. And this is actually the setting is in any of our operations in NX. So let's uh, double, double click or hit the edit button. And then we're going to the verify tab from the bottom. So I'll hit verify and 3D dynamic, and here's the setting right here. The, uh, all these cavity mill operations are set with the IP, IPW set to save. Uh, then another thing you can do if you want to create that IPW on the fly is just hit suppress animation so you, you don't have to watch the tool, and then you can choose forward to, to next operation. And what it does then is it just goes internally and creates the IPW for you. So you can see there's, there's the result of that. Now, if you have many operations that need an IPW, you don't have to go through each one individually. Just go through to the one at the end and save it, and you'll see that your IPWs will be saved all the way up the tree. Because, of course, it has to start at the beginning and create the IPWs to get to, to your last one. Okay, that's all the things I wanted to show regarding IPWs today. Um, I've tried to cover how the IPW flows and then the distinction between settings that affect how our operations behave related to the IPW and distinguish that from uh, the actual creation or existence of the IPW in the background and then show you how you can see the IPW at various stages and how the IPW then relates back to the program view and the geometry view. They, they must kind of be synchronized. Uh, we hope this information was helpful to you. If it was, maybe give us a like or uh, send us a comment. Thank you so much.